Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Today we're working on getting a stop from Eve because we had problems with speed control in our last session. We're using the Monty Roberts Dually Halter, which gives us extra control over her nose with a double-stranded nylon. If you put your lead line on this ring on the side rather than on the flat halter ring underneath, you have, in fact, a training aid. And Sierra's here to uh, help us with some work today, and she doesn't have much experience in driving, but with Katie at the head, Working with Eve, who's our best harness horse, we're going to give Sierra a few minutes of experience just driving around here with G and Ha. Okay, and I'm going to tell you what's going on as I watch it. They'll be going out towards the west, G and Ha. And you say it, say it loud so Katie can hear you, so Katie can support you. Eventually, what we'll do is we'll take the lead line off in a few minutes if Eve is doing just fine. And Katie will just walk along with Eve, and that's called join up. It's a concept developed by Monty Roberts. It's a very famous training technique. First, though, we're going to have the Monty Roberts connected so that if Eve makes a mistake and doesn't stop, there's an immediate correction with a little bit of a tug across the nose. Okay, go ahead, Sierra. Immediate G. Step up G. And keep the lines over her hips. That's very important. So you have to move fast and stay behind her. Once you get to the side of the horse, if a horse is spooking, you pretty much lose control. And that's why we do a lot of training with somebody at the head. Good. Nice four-legged stop. Good. And give her time to think about it a few seconds. That's real good. Remember, G means right, ha means left. The horse is right, no, ha, horse is left. Steady, whoa. Very nice. Now let's release, but walk along with. Join up. Eve gains confidence by having Sadie nearby. We gain confidence because we can hook up again right quick if there's a spook or a bad answer. Look at Eve's head. She's walking really nicely. Her head is low. She's following Katie. Good. Katie, one more time, then you drift away. And let's see if Sierra can keep control with the drive lines. But we'll be nearby if there's any trouble. Really good footing. It's good weather today, even though it's brisk. Sierra's been watching the Doc Hamill DVDs and she's learning Steady. how to do this. Whoa. Whoa. Ah, we got the Steady. Whoa. wrong answer. Okay, how are we going to deal with that? Katie's going to come up, connect, and we got to go back to square one. Eve just either she forgot or she says, oh, I don't have to do it if nobody's nearby. But you know, that kind of incorrect answer will fade away with enough repetition where we get the correct answer and remove the pressure when the correct answer is given. Okay, now uh, just uh, disconnect, Katie. We need to uh, bait Eve to go bad. <laughs> we need to bait her to give the incorrect answer so that she will come to realize that if she gives us the wrong answer, she just has to keep working. Yes, she certainly knows that word. Okay, now go ahead and fade away. If she gives us the right answer with, with Katie fading away for today, we'll call that our note of resolution with Eve's training on stop. See, she knows that Katie's not with her at the head. Step up, G. Step up, G. Good. 
<laughs> okay, a little, one more time. This time, stop not so close to the camera because there, there could be a collision. Step and slide your hand down the drive lines right now. Slide down the drive lines, your hand. Yeah. So that when you pull back, your elbows don't go behind your body. Okay. But you can, with vigor, uh, let her know that she's giving you the wrong answer or what it is that you really want by tugging back. Sliding the hands down the drive lines is the same as sliding your hands down the rein if you're in the saddle and want to get a one rein stop. Step up, Paul. Body language is good. Steady, ho. Ho. Almost. Okay, one more short trip. Eve is a very good dispositioned horse. I'm sure with enough repetition, she'll understand that the wrong answer is not going to give her the opportunity to evade work. Nice, nice. All right, we're calling that our moment of resolution. And the next time we turn on the camera, we're going to do one more thing today. I have a butt rope made out of laundry line. We're going to hook up Eve and Sadie with the jockey stick like we did in our last session. We're going to put the butt rope around, and each of us at the drive lines is just going to hold on to the butt rope. We're not going to connect because we're just not sure yet. We're not confident that uh, either one or both will spook by feeling that rope under, uh, around their hip. So we're going to have the ability to remove that pressure that might be a spooking type of pressure, and then just in one small baby step at a time get them desensitized to the butt rope and then sensitized to it. And by sensitized, I mean if their hips spread apart when we're doing pairs driving training, that butt rope will apply pressure on their hips and encourage them to keep their hips parallel. The jockey stick is keeping them parallel at the breast. And these are training tips that we got from Doc Hamill's DVD, Fundamental Set. And that's all for now. We'll turn back on in a moment. My most ideal team is five people. Today we only have four. And we're not going to plan on moving, but uh, Scott, who normally runs the camera, is just going to come up here and hold Eve off to the side. We are hooked up with our cross-check reins. And at the end of our last session, we explained it step by step how we did that. And in our last session, we also connected our jockey stick, which keeps their fronts together. And we did it at using the halters. Um, and so we're not going to uh, connect up the jockey stick today. What we're doing is doing a desensitization with my laundry line butt rope that I think is the right size. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give to Sierra one end of the butt rope. I'm going to very carefully, it's white, it's maybe something, it's for sure something they haven't seen. Are they going to spook by just seeing this thing? Looks like we're okay, body language. All right, now I'm going to walk around. Can you hold that on your, your other hand? Yeah, right. Now I'm going to walk around. Now Sadie's the one I'm most concerned. You're just going to keep it, keep the butt rope as if it were connected to the halter. And I'm going to touch Sadie, it's all right, with this laundry line as I go around. Not connecting anything. It's all right. It's all right. Duck under the drive lines. Talking, tugging a little bit on her right hip. Still no body language concern. Around Eve. Ah, Eve's head came up. She said, what is that? I'm touching her, giving her confidence. And here it is. Here's the butt rope. We're not going to connect. I don't think we're going to connect yet. We're not going to connect, but here's the butt rope. It gets connected to the halter of both horses. Eventually, we may be able to connect to the collars. The halter of both horses. Now, the next step would be 
to try to get a step forward. Let me have the lead line. Now, Sierra, can you move the, the jockey stick, Sierra? Uh, Scott? I want to see if we can step forward with the pressure of the butt rope on their hips. So we've got our lead lines. Katie's got the drive lines. If we can get three steps forward, well, we'll be happy with today's session. If they get spooked, especially Sadie, you're going to remove the pressure, drop it, or pull it away at the length of your lead line. If you drop it, she may get hung up in it. So it would be better if you just gave her the length of the lead line. We remember, we've got drive line control too, uh, and we'll, we'll just do it in a tinier baby step. Okay, so I'm going to give the command. We're going we're gonna to ask for a step up, and then we're going to let them go straight for three steps and, and kind of pull, right? Okay. We've never done this, so this is a first. Okay, step up, girls. Step up. Whoa, there you go. Whoa, Drop it. and oh, and she's pulling away. Now, is the butt rope gonna do its job? Go. So she still pulled away. Sure she Say it again. I just don't want her to dance. It's yeah, right, hard. right, right. Okay, what do you, th okay, let's do it without the drive lines next time. So the butt rope pressure, we're, we're studying the, the, uh, how well this uh, training technique works. We don't want to get uh, too many straps involved if there is a spook. I've got my side of the butt rope. And watch your legs, because yep. look down there. Yeah, you don't want anything wrapped around an ankle. So tell me, you Katie. The, um, what do you think? It just didn't work, or can, must I... it be a stronger butt rope? More of a rope. I thought this laundry line would be enough. But, I mean, in the videos, the, the butt rope is to keep them straight while backing. Ah. It's not to keep them together while they're going forward. So I, and I don't, if she keeps going apart like that, then that's when they're facing each other and I, there's no control anywhere. Yeah, right. So, um, uh, so I don't know the best way to deal with it. I think it kind of kept her closer at first, but then she realized it was just a rope and she was getting more slack. So. Okay. All right. Uh, Sierra's going to watch DVD number three before Monday, and then we're going to talk about it. Uh, if there's anything you can add, let's be ready to add it the next time we video. In the meantime, I feel that maybe if I use a more substantial rope that's just the same length, this length was good, uh, maybe that will... Uh, be a clearer signal to Sadie that she's not to move her hips. And you know what? If we can't solve this problem by studying the DVDs and safely trying our techniques, uh, Doc Hamill has always been available to me for questions. I'll be asking him the question and I'll let you know if I do ask him and what is his answer. Uh, how about... Um, somebody standing there and rhythmically tapping if she starts to move away. Just uh, let's do it without the dry line. You two. Yeah, that kind of thing. Cool. Oh. This is a postscript. We discussed the matter. We decided that we think Sadie is pulling her hip out after we asked for the hope. So what we did was, just to give us some more practice with the jockey stick and to let you see the jockey stick when it's hooked to the halter, we decided that we're going to, we took the drive lines off, we're going to go forward three to five steps, and when the hoe command is given, uh, and Katie, you do the commanding, okay, I'm going to be there to rhythmically tap on her hip to make Sadie realize that she's not to pull her hip out. Let's see if that works. It's all right. It's go ahead. Oh. I'm just rhythmically, lightly tapping. You know what? It's only one time, but I know from experience that you get a good, you get a good answer, you stop and let them think about it, let them remember it, 
and you try again next time. So that's what we're going to do. And this technique might work. It's very gentle, but it is a reminder. All my horses know how to move their five body parts, including their hips, when they feel pressure at their hips. So we'll just help them to understand what is the right answer when they're walking together. The covered square pen, because it's pouring outside, but that doesn't stop us here at Shadrach Farms. We're going to work with Sadie and her mom, Eve, on trying to lead together, not drive together, but lead together with this new butt rope that I made that uh, has a little more substance to it than just my laundry line butt rope, but is about the same length. We need to make sure that Sadie understands that when we come to a stop, that she's not to swing her hip out. So we're going to do it today in the square pen with just leading. Then, if time permits, we're going to put this bridle on E. It's called a gag bit. There are other elevator bits. Uh, it really does get you a quicker stop than any other bit I've ever used. And we, we're thinking of maybe using it when we're driving her in pairs, so that when we ask for a stop, we most definitely get a stop. It doesn't have a shank, as one would think of a shank, but it has this ability to go up this road if you're having to tug, and it puts more pressure, uh, fit pressure, on the horse. So we brought this out to try it today or another day with Eve. She did quite well on our practice after last session where um, we worked with her stop. Um, probably, I'd say an 80% rate, but 20% of the time when she didn't stop, um, we really had to join up with her again, even put the lead line on again. Reminder, no, 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 when we ask you to hoe, all four legs stop. Because when we're doing pairs, driving, pulling, Stop is so important when we ask for it. Okay, so we keep trying to be realistic, creative, how to get these two horses, mother and daughter, to walk together and stop together. Because in pairs, driving and pulling, uh, not only do they have single trees behind and jockey sticks or the front of the harness pole in front, but they're connected at various places. And if one doesn't stop or one throws its hip out, it could be a wreck. And we constantly guard as best we can here against wrecks by doing uh, tiny baby steps at a time. So uh, I'm going to walk over here with Eve and go up next to say. Can you step out a little bit? I'm going to go on the other side. We've got the Money Roberts Dooley halt around Sadie. And because we switch sides, we have to switch the lead line. They've been stopping fine when they're walking up already. How about the hip? They have. But you said that Sadie reared? She's Okay, weather has a lot to do with it, and that's why we're in this square pen, not because we just don't want to get wet, we don't want the camera to get wet, but it's a, more of a controlled environment. So, oh, and there's uh, <laughs> pigeons in here, and one just flew overhead, you probably saw Sadie look up. You know, is that a monster from outer space? Here's another pigeon. But Sadie lives in here. This doubles as a nighttime retreat for my herd of Morgans. So uh, I think she's okay on it. Um, but she is a little bulgy eyed. Now, Angela, at first, is going to leave the camera right where it is and come on over here and hold it. And what I'm going to do, just with this new, with this new, Angela wasn't here yesterday. What you're going to do is you hold the E, but you're going to hold this too. And watch. I'm going to apply pressure. This butt rope is uh, it's a uh, not a wide diameter rope, but it does have uh, it's 
nylon and or polyethylene, and it does have texture. So I think it will be a little bit more obvious to the horses when I go around their hips and touch them with it. This is the first time I've tried this. Can you get, with, maybe with your white stick, can you get Sadie's hip over? There we go. Oh, beautiful. You see, you need to be able to move the five body parts of your horse in order to do anything safely. So we did get her hip over. Now watch, I'm touching her hip. He was fine on it. Notice we don't even have the harness on. We don't need all of those straps and all of that leather. Can we hold on to this? Okay, can you give me this arm extension? Okay, now I wish we had a third, uh, fourth person today, but we won't for another hour, so we didn't want to delay our lesson. So now the question is, let me make sure we're still in camera's view because I want to be there with this white piece of PVC, it's perfect, uh, to rhythmically tap Sadie's hip if she tries to move it out. And we're only holding the butt rope. We're not connecting it to their halters because if we need to remove it because it's misinterpreted and becomes a spooky object, we want to be able to quickly remove it. Okay, so I'll be the one to ask for the uh, step up. I'm saying that quietly because they hear these words in our conversation and sometimes interpret them as a request. Sadie is the one that I expected. And when they stop to have her hips come out, good. But um, she's just standing beautifully as a pair now with her mom. Hold. Oh, all right. All right. Hold the eye. She heard something. Remember, it's a stormy day. There might be some sounds that she hears or sights that she sees that we don't hear and we don't see. Now, do you two girls feel comfortable stepping forward? When I ask for a step. Okay. All right, we're going to do three steps. Okay. Girls, mares, step up. Whoa. Ah, 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 see, that back leg came up. I hope you saw that on the camera. It was a beautiful pair's movement. But then Sadie felt that butt rope on the left rear leg, and it was high up. But did you see that, Katie, how she um, lifted up that leg? And that's what can be so very dangerous. The sled rack that I talked about maybe two shows ago, uh, the uh, trainer thought his uh, two draft horses were well-trained as a pair. Okay, up you go, up you go. Uh, Angela, make sure yours is up, even though it's Eve, we're not too worried. Uh, and then when he tried to do a G movement on a slight hill, I'm gonna go back there and lift that higher. Um, one of the horses stepped over the harness pole, both horses spooked, and it was a very, very uh, gory description of what that wreck was like. So uh, now, uh, Katie's butt rope, I'm going to move this camera and show you, is at a good height. And when I watch uh, pairs driving on RFD TV and on old westerns, when I see a harness pole or tug strap that high, I kind of relax. But if I see it down low, below the hock, I get nervous, <laughs> even though I know it wouldn't be uh, on video in an old movie on RFD TV if there's a big wreck. But now look at where Eve's butt rope is. See, and when we're in harness, we're going to have dog collars to hold up these butt ropes. Uh, but I'm going to walk over now and put it where I want it to be. Okay, let go for a minute. 
said, Whoop. even Eve just looked at her leg. Okay. It's on the outside of the tail, above the hock. As a matter of fact, close to the bottom of the hip. That's what I'm comfortable doing. when I do pairs driving. Any strap that I drive with, I, or any pole, I want it to be not much lower than where you see that butt rope right now. All right, now, uh, Sadie is the one that we're really concerned about because she's the youngster and the one who tends to lift her leg and throw out her hip. Yeah, can you pull your butt rope a little closer to her head, and Angela, you give a little with your end. There you go. That's good to desensitize her to that feeling. A little more, Angela. See, they're long enough to actually hook to the halters. We're just not going to do it today. All right, now I'm going to step back, and as uh, I hope a good note of resolution, if they're high enough, which both butt ropes are, and we step another three or four steps forward, and if I need to, I will use my arm extension to tap Sadie's hip to keep it in parallel with Eve, then we're going to say that's all for today. So, once again, they look good together. They're Breasts are a little bit far apart, but if we have the jockey stick on, uh, that will be under control. We just aren't using the jockey stick today. Okay, so I'm going to ask for step up, Sadie. Step up, Eve. Step up. One, two, three. Whoa. Good girl. Good girl. Now we're going to remove the pressure of the butt rope. We're going to Stop the work, which is their reward. And we're going to do this over and over and over again, with and without sir singles. Oh, oh, oh. There you go. You see why we have to do that with or without sir singles and um, dog collars uh, on the hips, on the bridge and on the hips to keep those butt rope training devices up out of the way because you know what you're not going to change the nature of the horse you need to understand the nature of the horse and then maybe you can control the wrecks and not have them so that's all for today see more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com